Let's look at the channel strip options in detail. As you can remember, we have two channel strips, the ones here in the main screen and the ones here in the mixer. These are of course connected, so whatever change I make on this channel strip, it will also be applied on its corresponding channel strip in the mixer. Let's start with the channel strip in the main window. There are some slight differences between a software instrument track and an audio track when it comes to channel strips, so let's start with the audio channel strip. Let's ignore setting for now and let's go straight to input, where you can set your input for recording. So right now mine is set to on. If you want another input, you can just select the options you have. My audio interface only has two inputs, so I only get two options here. You can also have it on no input, or you can have a bus as an input. So I won't go over buses right now, because that will be covered at another video. But really quickly, if you are a beginner, so you won't get lost, we can have a bus to route our signal to an auxiliary track. And once we do, a knob will appear that will allow us to define the amount of signal that we want to send to that new auxiliary track. This is very helpful and it can save you a lot of processing power. For example, if you want to use a reverb on most of your channels, you don't have to load a reverb plugin on each and every channel. We can only load one reverb plugin at an auxiliary track and then use a bus to record to send our signal there. So essentially, I can use just one reverb plugin to process multiple signals at the same time. If this doesn't make sense right now, don't worry about it, I'll cover it at another video. But let's quickly look at an example of a bus as an insert. So I have played this little phrase here. I can send this to a bus, so let's select that, go to sense. And let's choose pass one. And then I can go to my audio track and select input, go to bus and select bus one. So now I can press record and whatever signal is going to bus one will be recorded to my audio track. Actually, it won't be recorded because we have to set the amount. So you can just click and drag or simply press option and click on it and it will set it on Unity. So right now, let's arm record it and press record. And now, as you can see, I have an audio version of what I have played. Of course, if you want to convert MIDI to audio, you should never do what I have done, because that's extra work. If you want to convert MIDI to audio, you select the region and you press Ctrl and B as in Bravo or right click on it and press Ctrl uh, bounce in place. And that will convert your MIDI to audio. So don't do what I've done for uh, MIDI to audio. It was simply an example to show you how bus input works. Okay, another thing, let's go back to audio one. Another thing we can quickly change here is to make the channel stereo or mono. So right now, since, it's, it, since it has only one circle, it's mono. When I click on it, it has two circles and it changes the input to input 1 and 2. And it also changes the fader down here. So have a look at the fader while I switch from mono to stereo. And underneath that, we have audio FX. And this is where we load our plugins. So in Logic, you can load up to 15 plugins. Now the first list that comes up is the five most recent plugins that you have used. Underneath that, we get the Logic Stock plugins and all of your third party plugins are in the audio units. So let's load a few. Let's load the most recent ones. Great. So now, when I hover my mouse over any of the plugins, you can see that some options pop up. So the leftmost one is the on-off switch. When I click on that, it will deactivate. Let's use the bit crusher so you can see it here as well. It will deactivate the plugin. So you can see it's no longer activated. If I click in the middle part, it will bring up the plugin 
Let's close them. Let's say I want to bring up the compressor. I click in the middle part and it brings up the compressor. And the area on the right will open up these little two arrows, the list, so we can replace or plug in with something else. Also, on the top list, you also get an option if you want to use the stereo or mono version of the plugin. And in Logic, if you quickly want to navigate to where the plugin is, you can use it, has this little dash for the plugin you select. So let's say, let's use the DSR. I click on that, I follow the dash, and then from the list that comes up, it's this one with the dash again. So DSR2. Uh, also, you can move the plugins or you can have some space between them. And let's say that I want to move the DSR up here between the compressor. So I grab it and I move it until the line appears. So now it's after the channel EQ. Or I can switch places. So let's say that I want to switch place, um, put the channel EQ last and Big Crusher first. So I grab it, either, go on it and drop it on the plugin that I want to replace. And right now Big Crusher is the first one and channel EQ is the last one. Lastly, in Logic, let's use a track that doesn't have plugins, you get some shortcuts for compressor or EQ depending on where you click. So if you click on this bar right here, it will load up the Logic stock compressor. And if you press on the EQ box here, it will load up the Logic stock EQ. Let's go back to one. Now underneath that, as we have seen in the video, we've got the sense. And we, if you click on it, you can select post, uh, post fader, pre fader. We'll have a look at all of these later. Here we've got the output where you set the output of the track. By default, it will be on stereo output, which is one and two. If you're using laptop speakers, then it will say laptop speakers or headphones. And if you have more outputs in your audio interface, you can choose those. You can also go to your preferences. So remember it's command plus comma. And then go to audio, input and output assignments, and then set your output here. So again, I only have two outputs, so not many options for me. Underneath that, we have group, where we can assign to which groups our channel will be part of. More on that later. Underneath that, we have read, which is the default automation mode. So if you click on it, you can see the other modes as well. So more on that on the automation video. So underneath that, we've got the balance knob or the pan knob, uh, which is very annoying in logic. So if I click on it, you can see the different modes we have. Stereo pan. I wish this was like, like Pro Tools. I just find this one confusing. Underneath that, we've got balance, which is the def default one and binaural panner which is amazing for sound design. So when this pops up, double click on it. It will bring up this window with more options. You can play around with that one. Let's go back to balance. And right now down here on the left, we have the volume display, which corresponds to what I have set my fader to. So right now it says 0.0, .0 because I have it on Unity. If I raise it or lower it, it tells me by how many decibels I have raised it or lowered it. And next to that, we've got the peak level. Let's play something. So here you can see the last held loudest peak of the track. And if I want to reset it, I simply click on it and it disappears. Now, as with the track headers, we also get an arm, arm record, input monitoring, a mute and a solo button. And if you want to further customize your channel strip, right click on it, channel strip components, and you can either add or remove stuff. So let's say I don't want this icon here. I can select on the icon and it goes away. We have left the setting for last. Let's look at that now. So when I click on it, it will have some settings that you don't have. So these options down here are my personal channel strip settings with the plugins that I use for certain things. 
So let's look at the example that I have made for this video. So when I click on it, it will load plugins that I have chosen with the settings I have set. So if I click on the EQ, you will see that it has a high pass filter. If I click on next or previous channel strip setting, it will move to the next saved setting. So in my case, it will be voiceover 2 and voiceover. If I have a chain of plugins that I like, or let's say that I want to quickly transfer to another channel, I can clip on copy channel strip setting. Let's try that. And let's go to audio 5. So now we get two options here. If I want to paste just the plugins without the settings, so in our case without the high pass filter on the EQ, I choose on paste plugins only. If I want the plugins with the settings, I choose paste channel strip setting. And you can see that it has also copied my high pass filter and all the settings that I have set here. Now the rest are pretty self-explanatory, but let's go ahead, uh, ahead and look at everything. So bypass all effects and plugins, that will bypass everything. Remember we are in Logic, so you don't have to click each one to activate them. So you can click and drag, click and drag, there you go. Uh, the next one, remove bypassed effect plugins that will remove in our case, the compressor, because it is bypassed, and it will leave an empty insert slot, which I can remove by going to remove empty insert slots. Remove all effects plugins, that will remove everything except the send. Let's put the send here as well. So it remove empty, remove all effect plugins, so it moves everything except the sends. Remove all sends, that will remove everything, all the sends except the plugins. And if, for example, you want to go back to the default state, you can always go to reset channel strip and it will remove everything and go back to its original name as well. Let's say that you have created a plugin chain that you really like and you want to save it. You can go to save channel strip setting as, this window will pop up, you give it a name, let's call it test and then you click on save so right now wherever you go and click on setting it will appear down here so if i want to load those plugins with the settings i have set i click on test and it's here or what you can do is go to save as performance so let's click on that this window will pop up you name it and then you choose the program number so once you save it, you send the program change number from your MIDI controller and then you can remotely change between the channel strip performances you have saved from your MIDI controller. Let's go cancel. Let's say that I don't like this one and this test anymore, so I can simply go delete channel strip setting. Then click delete again. And right now it will be removed from this list down here. Okay, let's look at the software instrument channel strip now. Let's click on that one. So setting is exactly the same. Actually, let's create a new one. Setting is exactly the same as in the audio tracks, but with the only difference being that uh, we have different saved channel strips down here. With an audio track, the saved channel strip settings are plugins and sends. Here we have instruments. So if I click on my saved channel strip, bells, it will load an instrument, Sculpture, along with the plugins I have used to shape the sound. So if you create a sound that you really like, save it. No need to recreate it each time. Uh, here on MIDI effects, which they will have their own, own video, uh, you can select the MIDI effects that you want. So check out the video for that. And then here, let's create another one. Instead of an input, we get instrument and by clicking on it is how you load an instrument either a stock logic pro instrument or a third party one by going to the au instruments another way to load an instrument which is slightly more convenient in my opinion is to open the library so either press y as in yankee or simply click up on this little button up here to open the library navigate to the one you want let's say vintage clav solid clav 
and once you select it, it will automatically load, load it with its icon as well. Let's close that and let's look at the channel strips in the mixer. Now, as before, as you can remember, you can press Command 2 to open it on a separate window or you can click here or you can press X. Now yours will probably look a bit different than mine because I have enabled all the options. So you can either go to view and either check everything here, which takes a lot of time, or simply go all the way down to configure channel strip components, click on that, and then select what you want to add or remove from the list. You can also save it as a user default if you click on this icon here, or you can revert to factory defaults. Okay, let's look at this one now. Now something very important. If I make changes here on this mixer, the one with the when I press X, those will not be applied to the mixer that is open to a separate window. So if I go here to view configure channel strip components, you can see for example that VCA is unchecked and type and number labor are, un are unchecked. But if I bring this option, this mixer up, and go here again, you can see that everything is checked here. Now let's continue. As we have mentioned, these channel strips are the same. The only difference is that I can go up here and have either narrow view or wide view by clicking on these buttons here. And I can also have a few available options to quickly select what elements I want to be visible or not. On the very bottom of the channel strip, let's open this one up. I can take some notes. And if an instrument has a big name, like in this case, I can go back to configure channel strip components and either select two or three lines and I will be displayed in two lines. And that's it for the channel strips.